Hello again. I want to talk a little this afternoon about what's happening with regard to asylum seekers in Britain. I do not mean that I shall be expressing my own views on the matter, nor that of anybody else. Some people put posters up in their windows bearing the slogan, Refugees Welcome Here. Others would happily see the small boats machine gunned in the water. What I am doing is simply explaining how things are, not how this or that group, or I myself, might wish them to be. The first thing about which there is not the least doubt is that the number of people from Africa and Asia coming to this country and claiming asylum is not going to fall. For various geopolitical reasons, it is rising, and likely to continue to rise, at least for the foreseeable future. The second point is that there is no question at all of being able to remove asylum seekers from Britain, whether to Rwanda or anywhere else. That is a non-starter. Whether we withdraw from the European Convention on Human Rights or do anything else, it is not going to happen. Even if we clamp down ferociously on granting claims for asylum, it will make no difference, because failed asylum seekers will simply vanish from official sight and remain in this country. I think that deep inside we all know these facts. The government know them as well, and they know too that asylum seekers are a toxic issue over which they have no control at all. The only way to deal with the situation is therefore to lie on an industrial scale. But mark this, none of these lies have any effect upon the actual state of affairs, which is that more and more asylum seekers are arriving here, and once they are here, they will never leave. The number shuffled around, and the people themselves are moved from place to place, until the whole thing comes to resemble the shell game or a three-card trick. The idea is to confuse us so that we can never be sure what the truth is. So, for example, if there is a backlog of, say, 100,000 cases of asylum seekers waiting for a decision on their cases, then you can announce that due to your great efforts, that backlog has been reduced by 80%. Hurrah! A cause for celebration, surely. Except that this miracle has been achieved by ordering officials to rubber stamp tens of thousands of outstanding cases without investigating them. This is, in all but name, an amnesty, but it enables you to claim that you have dealt with that backlog. Or suppose that you have requisitioned 300 hotels and filled them to the brim with asylum seekers, and it's costing taxpayers a fortune. Well, you can deal with bad publicity from this by announcing that you have succeeded in clearing 150 of those hotels and they no longer have asylum seekers in them, thus reducing the bill for those hotels by a whopping 50%. Another triumph! Of course, you don't tell people that to do this you have got Serco to snap up all the affordable rented accommodation across the whole country and are using this for the asylum seekers instead. You simply point to all those empty hotels. As I say, it's like the three-card trick and in the end nobody can possibly work out just how many asylum seekers there actually are or where they are to be found. Just as I said at the beginning, the actual number of people claiming asylum in Britain is rising inexorably, but it's driven by what is happening in Africa and Asia, something about which we can do nothing at all. Do not expect that the Labour government will be able to do any better, because they won't have any influence over events in those two continents either. This is a problem which can only grow worse with every passing year.